So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the air box, carburetor and the fuel system. So we were talking earlier about the replacing the fuel lines. Now this is the reason why the old fuel line has actually perished. Okay, so now we're up to the stage where we're going to be installing the new clutch onto this older style engine. What up YouTube? Today we're bringing out the backyard bank. Now, everybody's got an old go-kart lying around. Now's the time to get it out of the shed and get it back on the track and have some fun. Okay, guys, we've got two carts here today. Mitchell's gonna be fixing this one, doing the carburetor and fuel system, and then moving on to do the brakes and get those back up and running. These ones are being a bit seized up for whatever reason. And then obviously I'm gonna step you through the process of pulling the carburetor off this dirty old racer, getting it fired back up, new spark plug. We're gonna be checking the chain, the sprocket, fitting up the new clutch and then bleeding the old brake system to make it new again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the air box, carburetor and the fuel system. So first things first, we're gonna remove the air box. And if it is stuck to the seat, you'll just have to cut that off with some sides. Put it off out of the way. Now, because we are replacing the fuel line, we can just pretty much cut the old stuff off. This one has gone really hard just prone to cracking. Now with the pe petrol tank being full, if we cut this off, it's just gonna leak petrol straight out of there. So we'll just have to be careful when we do that. We might even take the fuel tank off the go-kart, drain the fuel out, fix the fuel line, put it all back in, and then we can just reload the fuel back into the tank or throw it away. Now this guy here is the pulse line. It comes from the crank case, goes around to the carburetor, and this is what makes the fuel pump work. So we're going to replace that as well while we're at it. It's pretty old, very hard, quite brutal and prone to cracking. So change this out while you're at it. So now that we've got the carby removed, we're going to throw it over to the bench and show you how to change the carby kit. Just when you're working with solvents, remember safety never takes a holiday. First thing we're going to do is clean the outside of the carburetor using some solvent. This is just standard workshop solvent or brake cleaner. Now we're just going to give the carbies a bit of a once over. I like to clean the outside first so that when we're pulling it apart, all the dirt doesn't fall inside the carby. This is the little carburetor kit that you're going to need to fix the carby. And it's just got the gaskets required. It doesn't have a needle in the seat. So if you don't have that equipment, it won't matter. But as a bare minimum, change these out and it's going to cure 90% of your problems. Like I said earlier, we've covered this in another video. You can search for that in-depth explanation of how to do this car we kit on our library. Now, as you can see, there's quite a little bit of uh, dried up petrol um, inside the carburetor and also too that the gaskets have gone a little bit hard and you can't really see that in the camera but I can see it here that they're just brutal. Okay, so now that we've got the carby apart, we're just going to give it a quick blowout with some, um, a little bit more solvent, just like so. And crack the butterfly open. Now we've cleaned the carby, we're ready to start putting in the new gaskets. So now that we've replaced the gaskets on the carby, this one's ready to go back on the engine. Let's go see how Mitchell's getting on. Okay guys, so as you can see, Mitchell's been working on the orange machine. We've got the throttle cable and the fuel line removed. Carby's off ready for a carby kit as well. And then if we go over to the fuel tank, if we pull the pickup out of the tank, you can sort of see that 
This is the hose we talk about that can perish inside the petrol. Now if yours is falling apart, make sure you drain your fuel and put some fresh fuel. This one should have a little lead weight on the end of the fuel line and it's fallen off or it's missing. So we're gonna drain this tank and double check if it's in there and then we'll add a new one and some new fuel line. So this is a classic push start go-kart. You grab the rear bar, throw the cart in front of you, chase it down the outgrid and then jump in hopefully landing your foot on the throttle and taking off out, out of the pits. Now, if your engine was fresh and your carburetor was in good condition, it was never a problem and the carts actually started pretty easily. But being an older cart, if you haven't done any servicing and maintenance and you just picked it up and you wanted to get it started, they can be a real problem. Like you're pushing them for ages, trying to get them to go. They go, they stop, you fall over. Oh, it's a comedy of errors. So what we're gonna do now is pull the engine off the cart and install a clutch. Okay, so now we're up to the stage where we're going to be installing the new clutch onto this older style engine. Now the clutch does come in a kit and it comes with everything you'll need. A clutch cover, a plastic one. This is a steel clutch guard. Then we've got the clutch drum assembly with the sprocket already on it and a retaining nut. And then we've got the clutch shoes with a needle roller bearing, some hardware and most important, the instructions to put it all together. First thing first, we're gonna remove the old nut and sprocket. You can see that the clutch has been installed but the clutch retaining system doesn't fit because the clutch system we've got for this older engine is for a Yamaha S and this is a Risa piston port. So the clutch will work perfectly fine, it just, there's, just, there's no holes here in the crankcase to screw the clutch guard sort of retaining system onto it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the car and then uh, just use a plastic chain guard to catch all the uh, chain lube and whatnot. So we were talking earlier about the replacing the fuel lines. Now this is the reason why the old fuel line has actually perished down inside the tank and the fuel pickup's fallen off. Now this is pretty common. So this is why we pull the, all the fuel system out before we try to get these old carts going again. Okay, so we are changing obviously the clutch that's already done and we're gonna go with a new chain and a sprocket because as you can see here, the teeth, this sprocket being a little bit old and well used uh, has really come out of alignment uh, and hopefully you can see that on the camera it's chewed up all the teeth so going with a new sprocket with a new clutch and a new chain this one's obviously past choose by date as well so to get this guy to move it's going to be a bit of a mission we've got a little bit of rust here so I'm just gonna loosen up the sprocket carrier so what we can do is get a giant oversized screwdriver and wedge it down inside the sprocket carrier and then Sometimes it'll just pull, just like that. And we can move it into its new position. We're gonna roughly put the sprocket on where we think it's gonna line up and then we'll double check it with a straight edge. So what I like to do before I do a chain alignment is just to pull the engine mount clamps up Nice and tight so the engine, if it's going to move, moves into its final position. Then I line the sprocket up, then I can put the chain on and then redo the chain tension. So now that we've got the sprocket all lined up, we can just loosen off the engine mount clamps, put the chain on and then redo the chain tension just perfectly. Now we do have a video on this already. So if you want to check out how to get your chain tension right, just click through our library. Also too, after you've done your sprocket alignment, don't forget to re-tighten 
the sprocket carrier. So now that the carby has been refreshed, we're ready to put it all back together on the cart and do up the two retaining screws and then we can reroute a new throttle cable and new fuel lines. Once we've got the throttle cable out to the right length, we can simply just cut that down using a pair of side cutters. Now we've cut our outer to length. We can put that guy in there like so. So now we can reinsert the inner, push it all the way through, the throttle cable in. Now we can reinstall the throttle return spring, put the throttle cable down inside the butterfly, pull the cable tight, put the end of the throttle cable back through the accelerator pedal, fix it off, and that's another job done. And now that you've got the throttle cable all secured in, you can go back and zip tie it to the chassis. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the fuel tank pickup fuel line fuel delivery system. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the fuel tank from the cart and cut all the old crappy fuel lines off and replace those with the new ones. And you can just see how brittle those basically just totally splitting. Be careful with this one. We don't want to spill petrol everywhere. Now, like we we're talking about before on the other cart, the bottom feed fuel pickup had perished and fallen off. This is the old fuel line, like it was all broken and, and, and brittle as. So we fed through a piece of throttle cable and we've prepared the new tank fitting with new washers, new fuel line and the fitting. We're just going to put that down over there, like so, and then we can drop that down along the along the line and pull it out of the bottom, just like that. External washer, external nuts, slide those down under there, pull this guy out, don't need him anymore, and then we can do up this uh, fitting, but we want to make sure that the fuel pickup is pointing down, it's not up in the air. Put on the ring spanner. Hold the fitting, do it up till it's firm, and now we're good to go. Safety is a critical part of karting and nothing is more important than the brake system. So we're going to check the brakes for a safe operation by bleeding them and flushing the fluid. Now obviously we have covered a few brake bleeding videos here at the House of Power. This one is similar but an older model dent sort of style. And all we're going to do there is remove the cap and then drain out the fluid here and put in some fresh stuff. And as you can see here this Systems run a little bit dry on fluid, so there would be air in the system. So we're gonna fill this one up and bleed it through and make these brakes as good as new. So we're just gonna clean out the reservoir with some rags. I've got some lint-free versions here. And just get up any of the old stale fluid out of the system. Grab the trusty old Tony Kart Racing brake fluid. First things first, to bleed the brakes. We're just gonna pump the pedal a bit, hold the pressure. So with the pressure on, crack the nipple. Close the nipple, release the pressure, and then top up the reservoir if required. Just repeat the process until the fluid runs clear. And it's the same for the other side. Now we just replace the lid, do up the two retaining screws, and the system's good to go again. So there you have it guys, that's how you get your old carts back on track so that they're gonna work reliably and safely. Make sure you're just checking those fuel line, doing the carby kids, checking the brake system so that when you get to the track, 
you're gonna have no problems at all. Now, we do have more videos in depth on some of these topics, so check out our library. Now, all we've got left to do is kick this guy in the guts and let it rip.